Your mixes suck. After eight years of producing, I'm still learning new tricks and tips every single day to improve my productions. Let me show how you can turn those muddy mixes into crisp mix. No matter if you're a beginner or a professional, there's something in this video for you, I promise you. Let's talk about stereo image first. Stereo image is to do with the stereo width of a sound or sounds in your track. Sounds that are wide will be pushed to the sides, while mono sounds will sound narrow and in the middle of your face. Now if we take it a step further, you can place sounds in a box. With horizontal axis representing your left and right channels, the height or vertical axis of the box representing your volume, and finally, the front to the back of the box axis representing how distant something sounds. Alright, first, some quick tips on reverb to make it sound wide but not so distant like it's in the back of the box. Decrease the size of your reverb so it doesn't have as much room to go and bounce around. Now that you understand the concept of your mix being in a box, try to place your sounds in a mix so they occupy their own space. Overlap is okay, but if it's too much, it'll sound just too messy. Another visual example of this is like painting. If each color represents your sounds, placing them right on top of each other will blend and be hard to figure out what each color is. Placing them far enough away with minimal overlap allows the viewer, in our case, the listener, to clearly hear the sound. Let's first talk about how our ears perceive sound. At the low end of the frequency spectrum, our ears require more volume to sound at the same volume as a higher sound in the frequency spectrum. A real world example of this, pink noise versus white noise. Pink noise sounds more flat to our ears, and if you look at the EQ of it, it's like a downward slope. White noise is even across all the frequency ranges, and it really sounds high and tinny. What this teaches us is for our sound or our mix to be more balanced, we have to have a little bit more low end than we do high end, and it, it has to follow that kind of downward slope. Another great tip is reference tracks. Find a song that is similar in genre or style to your song that is well mixed, place it in your timeline, and then compare the EQs between your song and the reference track and decide what you need to do to get it to sound a little bit more like that. Next, we can boost pleasant frequencies in our EQ to pronounce different parts of our sound or the mix that we really want to hear more to level it out a bit more. You can also lower harsh frequencies, um, like a ringing or a certain pitch or whatever it is that's bothering you in a sound or a mix, and bring it down. Now, there is a point where you don't want to do it too much because it'll mess with almost like the human characteristic of, of it, because um, in the real world, nothing is perfect. So you have to add that little bit in, but at the same time, not too much. A great tip I heard once, was take something to the extreme, play with it, get it to how you want it to sound, then back off the dry, wet, or the volume of it, and that will give you a great effect. An example of this is taking a reverb, turning it up really high in the wet, uh, messing with the size and the different parameters and just getting it to kind of how you want it to sound, then back off the dry and wet a bit, and you'll have a great sounding reverb that is low and not interfering too much with your sound. You can also do this with compression. If you pump down the threshold on the compressor, then you can turn up the ratio and mess with the attack and release, get it to how much of a compressed sound you want. Then after all that, bring up the threshold or lower the ratio a little bit and you get a compressed sound. Back to white noise for a second. After about 15 kilohertz, if you just replace all of that information and just high pass it off and then replace it with white noise, it'll sound crispy. Whether that's taking a lead, using a sampler, and throwing white noise into it, so that way it triggers at the same time as your lead, and you can mess with the ADSR of it to get it to match the same shape as your lead. Low end. The first commandment in low end is nothing below 100 hertz besides your kick and your sub. All right, so if too many frequencies are below 100 hertz, it'll sound really muddy. And since the sound waves move slower, when you play it on an actual club system or a system with a subwoofer, 
your low end will get really muddy if you have other stuff other instruments besides just your kick and your sub underneath to go along with maintaining a clean low end side chain your kick and your sub if you don't know how to do this there's tons of videos on youtube you can look them up for your DAW specifically and usually it pertains to having a compressor that is triggered by the kick and it ducks your low end out of the way of the kick so they each have their own separate space for me, I use a plugin called SM Exoscope. It's an oscilloscope that shows me when my kick hits and I can see where my bass hits. And so I can adjust my side chain's release point to then give them each their own separate space. Using a visual representation, we don't have to rely on our ears to make sure that they are for sure out of the way of each other. I'll link the oscilloscope I use in the description. I think it's great because it's free and I really want to try to provide information for you guys that is free and resourceful so you don't feel like you have to shell out hundreds of dollars to do the same things that other plugins can do. I also have more to say about visual mixing but we'll get to that later in the video. Don't limit yourself to only side chaining your kick to your bass and other instruments. You can use side chain for a various amount of things. You can side chain a lead to the reverb on it so in that way they each have their own space and your lead sounds more punchy and in the forefront or you could use side chaining to take some instruments out of the way of a vocal in your track so that way they each have their own space so that way you just don't have to crank the volume of your vocal another thing to go along with side chaining is how you trigger the side chain if you use a compressor for your side chain and it's linked to your kick and the release is low it won't actually stop triggering the side chain until your kick fully stops because of those low end frequencies. So in order to clean it up a bit, you can, if you have Ableton, I don't know what the other DAWs necessarily have for their compressors, you can use a high pass to only get the attack of the kick. And that way it triggers right away and you can set the release really low and it'll be really quick. Another option is you can use a ghost kick. If you take a closed hi-hat, and you make it really short and at zero db then if you mute that track and you link the sidechain compressor to it you can have an instant trigger that goes along with your kick sound selection sound selection sound selection sound selection have you ever heard the phrase you can't turn shit into diamonds well it's very spot on with sound selection picking bad sounds that don't complement the rest of your track will just make it harder for you in the end do a favor for yourself and pick good sounds. There's so many great sample sites out there, but my personal choice is Splice. A quick tip with Splice credits, if you look on the Splice subreddit, a lot of people try to sell their accounts before they cancel because they'll lose all their credits. So you can sometimes get an account with tons and tons of credits for super cheap. Once you have enough credits, you can find a bunch of sounds you like and build your own sample pack. I personally named mine Professor Shit when I saw the DJ Mag video that the Swedish House Mafia made about their track one. Don't trust your ears. Don't be afraid to use the tools that we have nowadays. It's the 21st century for God's sakes. Without spending years training your ears, you can use the tools to help inform the decisions that you're making while you're mixing. Using EQs and vector scopes, you can really see how the width of your track and the frequencies of your track interact with each other. FX. For so long, I struggled to understand how the audio effects were truly affecting my sounds. A few years ago, I found this great Reddit post that had an illustration of it, but I couldn't find it, so I did some digging and I found one that's kind of similar and you get the same picture. To conclude, mixing is about giving everything enough space and making sure they work well enough with each other. Make your life easier and pick good sounds and spend the extra minute finding good sounds using a sample site. And if you can't hear a sound well, maybe try placing it somewhere else in the box. My name is Xander, and I hope you found this helpful.